Uh, okay, so Denis, uh, you'll be rationed, so don't go beyond the 20 minutes. So, François, since we, we are from the same ethnic group and, and from the same institution, I don't know whether you will be harsher or, or, <laughs> or milder to me uh, in but terms I'm, of time, I'm, but I, I try to stick with uh, the time limitation. So, uh, and, and there is a good reason for, for, for that, because uh, what I'm going to present to you is more an ongoing research program than, uh, than, uh, than a full-fledged paper, so that uh, first I apologize for not providing with you with a very, very straightforward story, but what I will, uh, uh, what I will desc uh, describe or, or, or present to you are mainly uh, raw figures about uh, public investment and finance in the former col French colonial empire that have just gone out of the factory, uh, of, uh, uh, of the statistical factory. So this is the joint uh, work with, uh, with Yannick Dupras, who is sitting uh, at the uh, uh, left of the table, and, uh, and uh, with uh, Sandrine Mesplessamps, another colleague. So we start actually with, uh, with, a, with a very uh, uh, simple and perhaps very naive uh, question. Uh, what does it wh why does it seem so difficult to build a sizable development state in Africa? So there are many, many potential, of, co of course, answers to these questions, many, many, and very diverse. And so firstly, uh, there are people like uh, political scientists like Bayard arguing that uh, historical extraversion of the African elites, so dating back as early as from the pre-colonial era, make them fa favor patronage financed by uh, natural resource rents and foreign aid. A2, artificial, the, 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 the states that, uh, the, the independent states that emerged from the uh, colonial period were uh, artificially delineated, if only in terms of boundaries. So that this made artificial states and nation with fractionalized political space. But here we focus on a another potential explanation, uh, which is really the legacy of uh, bad colonial states, uh, limited and biased colonial states, until 1960, where, which is uh, the time for the independence of, of uh, 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 French, uh, French colonies in Africa and elsewhere. And, 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 and that were, of course, followed and, uh, by uh, structural adjustment programs, uh, later on by drastic cuts in, in the 1980 or 1990. So we ask the question, how bad was the, the, the colonial state? Of course, apart from being colonial, okay? How bad in terms of, of, of size and reach, for instance? So uh, uh, actually, uh, we will provide figures for the size of, this, of these states and show that it, was, it, it is indeed the case that there was a minimal administration and, 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 and hence a minimal uh, state capacity. We, uh, we also have figures about the structure of taxation and we ask the question of, of the over-reliance on external trade tra taxation and or archaic domestic taxes, like for instance the poll tax that was uh, already, already uh, studied by Mohamed Saleh in another completely another context. Uh, a structure of expenditures, uh, paying high wages to uh, French administrators, like uh, uh, was argued by, by Elise Wiry, uh, another colleague uh, of ours, and, and, and also uh, whether the, the structure of expenditure could be biased toward big infrastructure, big French-like infrastructure, and towards a, a also extraction of natural resource. And we also asked the question of the difference between fr uh, French style of colonization and British style colonization. So the, the channel of persis, persistence here that we have in mind is very basic as well. Uh, we, we ask the question, have African elites just taken the suits and the shoes of European administrators so that well, the, 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 the bad state, the potentially bad state that, wa that was left at the end of, the, uh, of the, the colonial period was just taken over by the, by the African elites with these high wage, dualistic structures, pharaonic public works, no tax reform and hence no move in state's capacity and little, little grassroots level development. So of course, uh, as we will, uh, you will see, we, we try to cover the whole uh, uh, colonial empire, so not only Africa, but also Indochina. And of course, there is great heterogeneity across the territories that were colonized by the French. Okay? So there is a heterogeneity across space related to pre-colonial conditions related also to the conditions of, of, of colonization. Actually, Algeria, for instance, 
was transformed into a French department, so uh, uh, fr uh, was really included in the, in the, in, in the France uh, constituency, whereas Tunisia and Morocco, neighboring uh, countries, were protectorates, and we also have uh, well, uh, 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 mere colonies also uh, in, in our sample of countries. And here, I, uh, in, in, my, in my speech, I will focus more on the distinction between settler and non-settler colonies, of course, without provi providing any counterfactual, only descriptive statistics that, 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 ma that make the contrast, uh, contrast between these two kinds of colonies. Uh, and of course, there is also, uh, and this is one, one of uh, our, our major arguments, is about the heterogeneity across, across time. Because we ask the question about what colonial state are we, to are we talking about? Should we look at the colonial state that was prevailing uh, in the 1930s, in, in, in the interwar period, or post World War II? And you will see that a great change occurred actually after, after the, the, the Second World War. Uh, so we will, for the second time, uh, uh, sake of time, I will uh, summarize the two main points that we make in this very, very preliminary work. Firstly, when we compare, we contrast settlers' colonial state legacy to other uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, colonization, we find indeed that settler states were larger states, had provided also better or uh, uh, higher amounts of infrastructure, if only electric uh, capacity, for instance, in the, in the post-war period. Uh, uh, but uh, they have very mixed and even perhaps to some extent worse uh, uh, performance in education and health and in, in provided uh, 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 social, social spending. Uh, the second point that we make that relates with the, with the heterogeneity across time is that state structures that were inherited were those of the 1950s and not so much of the, of the earlier period. And those states of the 1950s, if only because they were meant to be developmental at, at the time, were very different from the pre-World War II ones. Okay, so uh, the, one of the basic messages, if, if you, wa you want to study the, the legacy of the colonial state, don't look back too much in time, because actually the structures that, uh, that independent states inherited was, was, the, was the result of drastic change that occurred in the 1950s. And wh why did this, this dra drastic change, change occurred? Uh, mainly, 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 mainly because uh, the, the French were actually or envisioning or uh, uh, foreseeing the possibility of, of losing their colonies, and, 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 and this is also why they started, they started this, uh, this uh, 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 to, 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 to have a more, a more, a more developmental uh, stance. In there. So uh, this, uh, this, uh, the figures I'm going to show you uh, are, are, are drawn from three years of data extraction uh, on, on, in the French colonial ar archives. This required a lot of standardization, homogenization of, of figures. And uh, 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 I, I must stress, I must emphasize that uh, when starting this project, I, I, well, actually, before starting this project, I, I thought that the figures were, at least the mac at the macro level, were already existing, but it happens that it is not the case. It is not the case. So this is, this is probably the most, the most important uh, thing that we do is to provide these ba very basic uh, figures. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's, uh, the structure of the colonial empire was rather complex with multiple layers of administration. And this is what makes uh, the data construction very difficult. We, we, we've got to aggregate. We've got to, 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 uh, to avoid uh, double counting, and, and so on and so forth. So for the sake of time, I will, uh, uh, so I will address the two main points to sh show you a bit of evidence about the two main points I was uh, uh, mentioning before. So firstly, settlement colonies versus others. Okay, so settlement colonies, what are they in, within the French colonial empire? Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, the ones that are in red in this, uh, in this table. Okay, and so you see that, well, depending on the, on the dates you, you look at, uh, more or less, uh, uh, well, in Algeria, the Europeans, and they were mostly French, uh, were representing uh, uh, always above, uh, always uh, starting in the 1910, always above 10 percent of the population, and, and, and uh, uh, the, num the numbers, the figures are a bit lower in case of Tunisia, and it's, uh, uh, it's Italians as well as French, and in Morocco uh, again lower. But when you look at the other colonies, the, the figures are much, 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 much lower. So the presence of settlers is much lower. Uh, 
so of course, well, uh, uh, so uh, Bob Allen being in, in, in the room, <laughs> I, I, I just uh, uh, here show a, a very quick uh, 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 a table about wage ratios uh, that, are, that is meant to, sh to, to reveal, of course, that the settlement colonies are wealthier or richer in terms of uh, wage levels that, than, than the other, uh, the other uh, uh, colonies. So, of course, the question is to, ask, uh, is, is to, to know whether this, uh, this uh, higher wealth uh, was dating back to the pre-colonial uh, uh, conditions or, or, of course, uh, are part of the result of the, the presence of uh, uh, French settlers, but it's another story. So let's, let me just uh, document with this, uh, this table uh, that, that shows uh, non-military state expenditures per capita in 1937 uh, francs. Uh, the, the difference, so you see again in the, in, in the top uh, panel of the table, you see the, the, uh, the, the settlement colonies. Uh, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, and you see, that, you can see that the level of expenditure per capita is much, much, much higher, uh, three to, to four times higher uh, than, than the, uh, uh, whatever the period you consider than, the, uh, that, than in the other colonies. And, and what is also striking in this table and what anticipates on the second message of my talk is that when you look at the interwar period, you, you, you see very little change in the, in the level of expenditure per capita, whereas when you look at the 1955 year, okay, you see, you see a great increase in expenditures per capita that seems to have persisted after independence, that is in the years just after seven, uh, 1967 or 68. Uh, so I have no time to show. So of course, the, these figures are narrowed down when we, 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 we consider them by, uh, we, we, we consider the ratio by GDP. So for the sake of time, uh, tell me, uh, Francois, uh, yeah, five minutes, okay. Uh, so uh, in, in terms of st tax structure, settler colonies are uh, also characterized by indirect domestic ta taxation more than ancien regime tax, capitation, poll tax, monopolies, custom duties. In terms of expenditures, infrastructure dominates everywhere uh, and represents roughly, according to the years or the territories, 30 to 50 percent of expenditures. There is a bit more sp social spending in settler colonies, but it is heavily biased, and, and there is a good, we have good signs of a repression of indigenous in education in settler colonies. I have no time to, to, to say so a word about income inequalities. This is another work that is, uh, that is ongoing with Thomas Piketty uh, on the uh, uh, drawing from the income tax uh, 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 that was uh, put in place in the 1930s in, in all French colonies. Uh, so uh, th so this, is, this is the figures for social spending. So believe me that there is a, only a slight difference. And in terms of biasness of this uh, social spending, Perhaps uh, the most eloquent figure is uh, the, uh, the, one, uh, the, the graph on the top of this uh, slide, where you see that uh, well, uh, 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 the, the blue curve being the expenditures per capita allocated to uh, uh, Europeans in terms of education. Okay? So it's educational expenditure per capita per head of uh, 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 French set set settlers, whereas the bottom line uh, with uh, 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 the bottom uh, 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 line with, uh, in red is, is expenditure per capita de de dedicated to indigenous people. And you see here, the, uh, you see here on the, uh, at the bottom of the, of the slide, uh, you see uh, the performance in, in terms of uh, primary enrollment ratio for the indigenous population. And you see that Algeria, Tunisia, or Morocco uh, do not compare very well with, uh, with the other colonies, non settler colonies, to, the, to, to our surprise, actually. And even Algeria seems to be lagging behind, even lagging behind t Tunisia at the end of the colonial period. So let me just say a few words about the post-World War II to just illustrate the boom in expenditure per head, in expenditure per, per capita after the 19, uh, after the, in, in the 1950s. So this applies to Algeria and Morocco. And let me just do a zoom for Sub-Saharan Africa. So you see very clearly a discontinuity in, uh, 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 around the, the year 1950, and for all, for all areas, you see a very great, great increase that was already shown in the, in the, in the table. Uh, actually, we have also a comparison uh, with British colonies restricted to West African te territories, and uh, we can show that the, the, the boom actually occurred also in British colony. It seems to be of lower magnitude, 
So perhaps the British, having already lost India, were, were not, were not uh, running uh, after, the, uh, were less running after uh, their, their colonies at the time. Uh, still, when uh, actually this, uh, this, uh, uh, this comparison is, is a bit biased by the Nigerian uh, exception, and when we compare pairs of countries that are neighboring countries, we see more or less the same figures for the British and French colonies. So what's most important to finish uh, to, is that this, this boom expenditure also was met by a, a boom in tax revenue. So it's not only that they subsidized very much uh, uh, the, 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 the colonies at the time, they also succeeded, well, at least well, we argue that they also succeeded in increasing tax revenue. This is still a mystery to us, well, how, how they succeeded. But the, so I have no time to, to say uh, 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 words about the components of this, uh, this uh, success in tax revenue. Uh, I would just uh, also mention that we asked the question as to whether, of course, so in the later period, you see that this boom ex of expenditure was not only allowed by an increase in tax revenue, but also, in public, uh, also by transfer from the metropolis, and we asked the question of the persistence of its dependence that could have also stemmed from, the, the, from, from this, uh, this later colonial period. So I have no time, perhaps, uh, for the sake of time, I will not summarize and ask uh, additional questions, but perhaps they will come uh, during the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Denis, for, in particular, for having uh, sticked to the time uh, constraint. So now we have, uh, as a discussant, uh, Douglas Campbell. There. And, uh, Please try to keep below five minutes. Uh, yes, of course. Um, all right, thank you very much. Uh, it was a very interesting paper. Um, okay, uh, and so uh, the question that they're asking is they want to learn about uh, the impact of colonization on development, and so the authors study comparative public uh, finances in French and British colonies in West Africa. The main finding is that uh, the patterns are quite similar in both French and Brit British colonies with perhaps some small differences. The authors write that the most striking fact uh, is the great increase in expenditures in the last uh, decades of colonization, which is explained uh, primarily by an increase in fiscal revenue. Uh, I found the paper relevant and interesting, and uh, didn't actually find much uh, in the paper itself to take issue with. Uh, I also think that the authors should really be commended for their data work, and actually one thing in the paper you could even um, point out a little bit about how, how novel some of this is. Um, in the discussion, there were a couple of things. Uh, I thought one thing, some of the, the claims made could probably benefit from comparison with other countries, such as uh, these countries relied too heavily on tariffs, uh, for example. Uh, it's my understanding that many New World countries actually, uh, during this time, at least in 1900, got all of their revenue or most of the bulk of their revenue from uh, tariffs. Um, uh, and also the same when you're discussing the development state size in Africa, I think. One of the very interesting things and a point you could make is um, how um, strongly correlated public finances are in general uh, for all countries. And I'll actually show you some more data on this. Um, I would be a bit more interested to hear, uh, so if you want to add some more value added to the paper, I think this could also be done. If you have more details on the spending on education or on infrastructure, are they spending on different projects would be interesting. My initial bias is going to be that differences in colonial public finance likely had at most a second order impact on development. Uh, the results in this, uh, this intuition. I never found uh, to be a bit more, for sake of uh, discussion, to be a, a bit, um, well, in any case, I never found that the economics literature on the supposed importance of British versus uh, French colonization uh, that compelling. So most French colonies were in sub-Saharan Africa. The British colonies in West Africa are just as poor. Uh, the French colonies in Northern Africa did much better, right? And so this actually points towards uh, geography as being an important factor in development. Uh, and so this is just, this is an indication of some of the, uh, some of the countries in the study uh, looking at development index instead of GDP, just because we don't want to factor um, uh, oil into the equation. And what you see is, of course, the northern African countries are, have done quite well, and they're French. But if you look at the West African countries, it's really a crapshoot. The uh, colonizer has very little, right? If, whether your colonizer was German, French, Spanish, it doesn't seem to matter. All of these countries have done very poorly, and all have done very similar. 
this is a, a huge uh, swath of territory, right? This is, all, this is larger than Europe, so these countries are very heterogeneous. And despite uh, very different cultures, languages, uh, and so forth, uh, they all have very similar uh, developmental experiments, which also points towards uh, geography. Okay. Um, one of the prominent findings of the paper is that fiscal policies were very correlated across space and time, uh, and that net ex expenditures rose substantially in all colonies in the last decades of colonization. What could be driving this? Well, this is actually a point which uh, generalizes uh, very interestingly. So this is just in the Anglo countries. This is another indi indicator of public finance. This is top marginal tax rates, right? Uh, and so what happens, I think, is that when politicians are running for office and they think about, oh, I have to have this policy of some sort, right? they actually look at what other countries are doing uh, is actually a good explanation. But these are remarkably correlated over time. And you can look at non-Anglo countries as well, and you get a very a similar history, which is actually uh, also a related history to what you see in West Africa. Um, uh, some, so some follow-up paper ideas. So the, the conference so far has kind of hemmed towards looking more at uh, institutional and colonial determinants of development. Uh, some other things which would be interesting to look in uh, would be one is the history of birth and death rates in, in West Africa. Uh, Malthusian ideas have kind of gone out of fashion in development, but in a world where history matters, even if Malthusian forces mattered in 1900 or 1950, then the legacy uh, would still be important today. Uh, so if you have low income for Malthusian reasons, you're going to have low human capital and low technological growth. And so this is an issue that has not been looked into so much in West Africa. Um, I'd also like to see more done on looking at the spread of agricultural technologies from Europe to Africa. If Alfred Crosby is to be believed, uh, the, in, the entire Eurasian agricultural technology basket uh, could not be transferred, transported to sub-Saharan Africa. Right? And if you're in a Malthusian world, agricultural technologies are very important. Um, all right, and then the last, I'd want to document uh, trade costs historically in West Africa, if you could. So most Africans don't live on the malaria-ridden coasts. The rivers are not navigable. The disease environment historically has made uh, trading in Africa quite risky. Uh, and in a world with hysteresis, historical trade costs, the, the real wage will actually be a function of uh, these historical trade costs as well. Uh, and so these are all uh, issues which I think probably have first order developmental implications in Africa, which are actually not uh, uh, related to institutions. That could be interesting to look at. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we have time for only two very short questions. Yes? Okay, yes. Now, of course, uh, it seems to me if we want to understand the impact of colonial state, we need to consider not only compare French and British colonial states, but compare colonial state with states of the formerly independent developing countries. And it seems to me when you make that comparison, there is a very striking difference. Colonial states had a bias for free trade. And obviously, well, so, so did the, perhaps the more formally, formally independent countries, but the difference becomes more and more striking during the interwar period. Colonial states continued with free trade, but many formerly independent developing countries tried protectionism, and they began with import substitution industrialization policies, and as a result, they moved on to industrialization earlier, and they began to experience economic growth earlier. And I think in any kind of balance sheet, this is one thing to take a look at. Thank you. Yes. So my question was about Algeria. So it was kind of one of the most interesting things you, sh you showed was most interesting findings um, was that education spending was lower in those settler states like Algeria compared to sub-Saharan Africa. So I was wondering if that was to do with the, um, the threat of, kind of revolution for the white settlers. So was Algeria, did Algeria resemble South Africa where the white settlers were afraid of educating the, um, the native population, whereas in West Africa where there are no white settlers, you need, a, you need some class of educated people to run the state. Given you don't have white settlers, you have to rely 
on natives. So I was wondering if that kind of dichotomy be between the settler states, the political economy of the settler states versus the political economy of the states without settlers, uh, was something that could be supported with, say, qualitative evidence. There must be statements from colonial administrators about what their incentives were in, in terms of setting up these states and what their constraints were. Particularly when you have, um, I'll finish quickly, but you have, in a, in a non-settler state, you just have a French administration and a native population. But in Algeria, you have uh, the white settlers as an interest group. Then you have a French state, then you have a native Algerian population. So it becomes a freeway kind of game, which is, which is more interesting and more complex than, kind of, than the standard models we're used to where you have a masses and an elite. So. Okay, thank you. Denis, do you want to? <laughs> okay, th thank you very much. I will be sh I'll be sure. Thank you very much for all those comments and suggestions. I, I cannot address all uh, them all, but but uh, so I try to, I try to gather the, the arguments. Appa apparently, there is a general interest in Algeria. So so uh, so uh, and uh, again, also in your, in your suggestions, uh, you, you said, well, okay, uh, f fair enough when you compare uh, British West Africa with French West Africa. But what about comparing French Algeria with something else? And of course, South Africa would be the, uh, one, one of the best uh, comparators for, 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 for Algeria. We are, we are thinking of it. And, and, and let me, let me say, see, say something that I could not say in, in, my, in, my, in my talk, that, that, which is very striking when you look at the figure, and which is st still a puzzle and a very, very much a mystery to us. If you look at the, so actually the Pied Noir, the, 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 the French settlers in Algeria uh, well, all went away in 1962, more or less. And, and if you look at Tunisia and Morocco, whose independence was granted in 1956, uh, 56, yes, more or less, uh, also uh, uh, at the, uh, in 1965, you find no longer any, any French settler in, in Tunisia and Morocco. So, in contrast with, uh, with South Africa, of, co of course. But what is also striking is that we find no collapse at all in tax revenue per capita and in an expenditure per capita. So for expenditure, it's, it's, it's more or less, uh, can be explained if you, if you assume that, of course, Algerians have taken the place of uh, French civil servants with the same wage and so on and so forth. But for, for, uh, for, for, for tax revenue, if you believe that the French settlers had kind of an enclave economy, and, and, and so even if they, if they left most of their capital, their physical capital, and the land they owned, uh, of course, in Algeria, it's hard, it's hard to recall reconcile the, this, uh, this stability of, uh, of uh, uh, revenue per, per capita with, uh, with uh, the loss of the, the human capital. So uh, just uh, another thing uh, regarding, uh, uh, yeah, so, so you said, yeah, uh, colonial states compared to, yeah, good, uh, good idea, but that would, would require to, uh, f from us uh, additional uh, uh, data collection. Uh, um, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I'm completely buying what you, what you said. Actually, during the 1930s, during the Great Depression, actually what allowed uh, 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 actually uh, all, all of the, uh, the, the colonial states, whether it was Britain or France, uh, used their, their, their colonies, you know, well, the trade between colonies and, and the colonial states in, increased while they were ra raising protectionist barriers uh, uh, around, around the colonial uh, space. Okay, so, so that uh, precisely what allowed the, 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 uh, uh, the ownership of an empire uh, was, was precisely to, 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 to uh, 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 kind of have a protection uh, during, during uh, uh, bad times. Uh, so, uh, so just a, a few words about qualitative evidence regarding repression of education of the indigenous in, in historical uh, or, or qualitative evidence, and it must be underlined that Algeria, in contrast with, and we, if, you, if we make the contrast between t even Tunisia and Algeria, uh, 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 there is a striking contrast. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you see the performance at the end of the colonial period, uh, 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 Tunisia, not only for primary enrollment, but also for secondary enrollment, is much higher than, than Algeria. And Algeria was governed by as Tunisia as a protectorate, in, in Tunisia as a protectorate, the metropolitan gover government had more say in the, in, the, in the allocation of expenditures. Let me finish there. Thank you, uh, Denis. Uh, one point about, yes. Uh, one small point to, to Denis, if, if I'm allowed to. 
No, we're quite on time, Professor. <laughs> no, just, just my point is about your introduction. You're, you're trying to categorize various explanations, and you say, no, we are uh, trying to investigate another track, which is the public finance kind of uh, uh, explanation. But it seems to me that the public finance is more of a channel through which other explanations can find expression. For instance, you could say, you know, this thesis about the fractionalization of the political space, you could look at public finance data to see whether some indicators support that. So is it really a different explanation or is it a tool to analyze some explanation? That, that could be that actually public finance in the colonial period is an intermediate variable for, for other data, more long-term de determinants, but, but uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, at this stage, I think I have to ask the organizers whether we can uh, go over by uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes or whether the boat will leave without us. Is that a problem or uh, not? <laughs>